Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today at the Israel-India Joint R&D I4F Funding Opportunities webinar. We're very excited for this opportunity to connect with you and are very privileged to have all of you on here um, in these very hectic times. Um, we have many high-level distinguished speakers that will provide insights and to support mechanisms that provide matchmaking, partner matching, funding, um, to assure the mutual success between India and Israel, um, private sector collaboration. Um, my name is Hilly. I head the uh, Emerging Markets Desk at the Israel Innovation Authority, um, and we'll be hosting you today um, in partnership with uh, Mr. Barak Granot, head of the trade mission at the Israel Embassy in Delhi, together with Mr. Rahul, please forgive me if I'm pronouncing this, um, Kulshur, <laughs> Mr. Rahul, could you please, uh, your name in full, uh, so I don't make any mistakes, my apologies. Uh, no, sure. I'm Rahul Kulsvest. Thank you so much. Um, who's heading the I4F fund um, under GITA, the Global Innovation Technology Alliance. Um, in addition, we have two fantastic case studies um, under the I4F fund, um, which we'll present uh, shortly, and we are very happy to begin. Um, we'd like to share with you a few guidelines for the webinar. Firstly, we kindly request that all the participants be on mute in order to allow all of us to present. Um, if you do have any questions uh, during the webinar, please feel free to share it. There is a Q&A button available. Just use it in order to post your questions. Um, you can uh, address the questions to the relevant speaker by stating their name. Um, and we will be able to address the questions at the end of the session. Of course, this session will be recorded and made available on YouTube at the end of the webinar. And we invite all of you to share it and also to connect with us post webinar with any questions via our emails for any assistance that we can provide. Uh, just to go over our agenda for today. Um, so as I mentioned, we'll be beginning with the head of the economic trade mission, Mr. Barad Renot, followed by head of the strategic project management in Gita, Mr. Rahul. Um, I will be providing an overview of the I4F fund from the uh, point of view of the Israel Innovation Authority, followed by Dr. Raju, um, the CEO and medical director of Apollo Radiology International. Then we will also hear from Mr. Ayal Gura, co-founder and chairman at Zebra Medical, Avinash, the COO of Vayodia from the partnership of Vayodia um, and AgroSolar. And, and finally, Mr. Rafi Broom, co-founder and VP business development Vayodia. Um, so let us please begin. Um, I invite Barak to give opening remarks. Uh, please, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Hilly. Great to see you. And thank you for Sarah and the entire Israel Innovation uh, Authority team and the uh, uh, GITA team. Uh, it, I'm happy to be here today uh, to promote this uh, important uh, gathering uh, and interaction. Uh, so, so let's start. Who are we? We are the economic and trade mission at the, at the Embassy of Israel here in India. Uh, our role is to um, uh, to promote trade and economic uh, uh, relationship between uh, the two countries. Um, next slide, please. And we are representing uh, the Ministry of Economy and Industry, uh, the equivalent of the DGFT uh, in, uh, under the Ministry of Commerce in, uh, in India. The, the role of the uh, Ministry of Economy as a whole and uh, specifically the Foreign Trade Administration under the Ministry of uh, Economy and Industry is to promote uh, industry fund support, uh, trade agreements and economic and trade missions uh, abroad that are active in order to, as I said, to promote uh, trade and investment between uh, the countries, in this case, between India and Israel. Next, next please. Hiri, next. Slide. Yes, so uh, here you can see uh, uh, the list of uh, countries that we already have uh, uh, trade agreements uh, uh, with, uh, free trade agreements. Uh, unfortunately, uh, India 
has been in the in the right side hand right hand side uh, for uh, far too long uh, uh, since 2010 there are uh, 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 constant rounds of neg negotiations and discussions about uh, uh, upcoming maybe future free, uh, free tra trade agreements between the countries and I sure hope that uh, my successor uh, would lead uh, that uh, these efforts into a full success next next slide please As you can see, uh, our economic and trade uh, missions uh, teams are spread all over uh, the world, uh, uh, specifically in 45 uh, different uh, locations. Uh, as mentioned before, we're connecting uh, be between the Israeli companies and Indian stakeholders, uh, potential investors, uh, uh, distributors, integrators. Uh, we're solving trade barriers uh, uh, with the government uh, entity, with the different government uh, entities, in this case in, in India. Uh, pr providing professional information, uh, uh, organizing incoming and, uh, and outgoing delegation, uh, mostly with the Israeli Export Institute, but sometimes also with the Israeli Innovation Authority and other entities, uh, arranging B2B meetings, um, connecting to uh, uh, foreign investors as mentioned, and uh, um, you know, uh, international finance institutions and uh, uh, governmental projects and so forth. Next slide, please. So uh, this is me, and I'm going to be replaced by uh, Natasha uh, uh, in September. Um, uh, but the, the other two economic and trade uh, uh, counselors uh, are here to, here to stay. Uh, Mr. Sagi Icher in uh, Mumbai, uh, responsible for the darker blue area, uh, uh, all the central area of, uh, of uh, India. Uh, and uh, Dr. Shai Moses, who is responsible for uh, the uh, southern area, of uh, Bangalore, Hyderabad, and, and these regions. Um, and my office was responsible for the Northern in, in India, including the Seven Sisters uh, uh, as well. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned before, I would be replaced by Miss uh, Natasha Zenging uh, uh, later on in uh, September. Next. So this is my team, uh, Economic and tra Trade Missions team. Uh, each and every one of these uh, wonderful, wonderful people are responsible of being your point of contact in, uh, on my team, connecting uh, 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 you guys from India to the uh, relevant stakeholders in Israel, to the best technologies, the best innovation, uh, best, ent uh, best and re most relevant entities like the Export Institute and like uh, uh, the Innovation Authority, and uh, connecting you guys, the Israeli uh, uh, audience, uh, to the most relevant contacts in the Indian market. Next slide, please. So you can see over here in this slide, uh, our uh, ecosystem, uh, the, the entities from Israel only uh, that we are working with. Uh, this is a, 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 just, a, just a glimpse of, uh, of what we do, but we definitely represent the Israeli interest here in India of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, uh, the Manufacturing Association, uh, New Tech, the Innovation Authority, uh, Ministry of Health, uh, Ministry of Agriculture, uh, Invest in Israel, Export Institute, uh, our, water, uh, our Ministry of Water and Energy, uh, and so forth. And, uh, and we also work uh, uh, very closely, of course, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, but also uh, with the Defense Section and other entities as well. Next slide, please. So uh, in the, over the past uh, few years, uh, we've seen a, a very, very, very uh, big uh, and positive change in the relationship between our countries, uh, starting for, from the uh, visit of uh, uh, President uh, uh, Mukherjee of India to Israel in October uh, 2015, Later on, the, uh, the historic visit of uh, 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 President Rivlin to India in uh, uh, November uh, 2016. Later on, the visit of the Honorable Prime Minister of India in uh, July 2017. And then uh, uh, the historic visit of uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu to India in uh, January uh, 2018. We've seen so much interaction in the highest level and of course, the, uh, uh, it, it also uh, was presented 
uh, uh, represented in the, in the volume of trade and the volume of interaction happening between our countries. And, uh, and you can see it in the amount of, in the growth of uh, uh, requests that we've seen from Israeli companies uh, uh, to work uh, with Indian companies. Next slide, please. Here you can see uh, the growth, uh, the big jump from 2016 to 2017 and uh, uh, 2018. Definitely uh, 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 the, the volume, uh, and this is only from the Israeli side, the volume has increased substantially. I'm and, and, and here on this slide, you can see only the queries that came to the Delhi office, not the entire uh, economic and trade mission uh, in, in India, only to Delhi office, you can see a sharp increase in the, in the volume of uh, interest. Uh, in the queries that coming from the Israeli side. Uh, by the way, in January 2018, one of the major achievement, uh, uh, the, the, the top most achievement was the uh, launching of the I4F, India Israel uh, Industry Innovation Fund. Uh, and uh, this is the reason why, why we gather, we all gather in, here today. Um, next slide, please. So what can we do for you? Uh, of course, we can uh, uh, introduce you to relevant business partners in Israel and in India, uh, provide you professional information on business opportunities on both sides, uh, and info, information about incoming and outgoing delegations is available all, on our website. Uh, we can arrange a B2B meetings with Israeli companies in exhibition, delegation uh, and market uh, visit or, or on Zoom uh, and WebEx and uh, uh, other and Google Meet and other uh, virtual platform because of the Corona, therefore nothing much happening in the in more physical uh, aspect. But uh, uh, once things would back to would go back to normal, this is what we do. Next slide, please. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Barack. Um, I think it's very um, eloquently put, and also we would like to say that you are one of the most active, diligent, dedicated, professional missions we at IIA have ever had a chance to work with. And it comes through uh, with your diverse sectors, the amount of connections you're able to make, the matchmaking profiles that you have. Um, and I4F is very, very um, privileged to have you as our partners in making this happen. So thank you very much for your time and for sharing. And we definitely tell both um, the Indian participants and the Israelis listening, please use Barack and the mission um, as much as you can, because that's what they're there for. Um, so thank you again. Um, and now uh, we'd like to move to our Gita representative. Um, just before that, um, we'd like to say that IIA is lucky to have Gita as a partner. We've been in partnership for now almost a decade um, on various programs, I4F being the most successful. Um, We've learned each other's ways. We've been able to really leverage each other's knowledge. Um, and we're very excited to um, have not only this fund, but also looking forward five more years into our partnership, making great things happen. So uh, Mr. Rahul, the stage is yours. yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Hilly, very much. Thank you, Barak, for giving a very informative uh, presentation, I should say. Eli, your words is, uh, we also have a same feeling from our side. We are also lucky to have IIA as our partner and we see a lot of attraction uh, uh, in our Indian industry towards the Israel uh, because of the innovation, what they give to the world. So uh, before going to the India Israel Innovation Fund in detail, I would like to introduce Gita in front of you. So Gita is a global innovation and technology alliance. Uh, which is a not-for-profit Section 8 company jointly promoted by Technology Development Board, which comes under Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, and Confederation of Indian Industry. So what was the genesis of GITA? Why it was started? So as we know, the Indian industry, we have a very poor investment in industrial R&D. So that is one uh, reason uh, where actually uh, everybody was looking at how to attract industrial uh, investment in R&D. Second is the direct incentive. So in 2010-11, there was no flexible funding support 
mechanism which can give direct in incentive to the industry so which was missing that time third is the poor collaboration so though we have a collaboration for trading but the collaboration for joint r&d was missing so with this concept and with this reason prime minister council of uh, trade and industry they recommended the incorporation of government ad arm length entity under ppp mode to professionally manage government fund for flexibility funding to industry for doing r&d which is in collaboration with the global partner next slide please so you can see uh, this are the elite uh, leadership uh, who is guiding geeta uh, it's a combination of industry and the government uh, we have a chairman uh, uh, mr vikram kirloskar who is also a, a chairman of uh, toyota kirloskar motor private limited we have recently in our board uh, mr cn raghupati who is uh, india head for uh, from in infosys we have mr deep kapooria from high tech gear we have a uh, dg cii mr chandrabit chandrajit banerji in our board we have a representation from tata chemicals from godrej and similarly we have a, a representation of government directors you can see we have uh, in our board who is co chairman dr neeraj sharma uh, tdb secretary we have head international corporation De uh, division of department of science and technology uh mr sanjeev kumar vashne similarly we have representation of uh, ministry of sme msme so with this yes yes so you can see uh, the geeta is guided really the presentation has gone can you just so with the representation of industry and government geeta is guided by uh, good professionals uh, can you just go to the next slide please so vision of mission so geeta with a vision to strengthen india innovation ecosystem through supporting and enabling technology and innovation driven enterprises what are the missions of india geeta wanted to catalyze india's recognition as a key innovators we want to inspire indian industrial community community to recognize r and d in deploy deployment we want to enhance risk appetite of the indian industry for taking up innovative project that is the main reason why geeta has been made we want to create a vibrant skill workforce we want to become an enabler for transfer of world class technology to india through viable arrangement next slide ahili please so these are the four pillar where geeta is supporting one is ex, uh, funding so geeta extend financial support in the form of grant conditional grant uh, to promote industrial r&d innovation technology acquisition and international s&t collaborative efforts we help in the capacity building Uh, by catalyzing innovation and empowers ideas by offering specialized information matchmaking ip protection in the area of technology design and ipr management we also help in strengthening ecosystem by involving in technical financial strategic policy research and advocacy to industry research institution state government and central government and offer global networking platform we deploy uh, deploy various innovative and revolutionary scheme of government of india Uh, which is supporting industrial research and development projects next slide please so these are the sector of uh, engagement where geeta is working you can see we have covered most of the sectors with different kind of industry based on the expertise of uh, 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 based on the expertise of our counterpart uh, countries so next slide sir, please yes so this is uh, you can see uh, this is the program portfolio of geeta which can be see uh, we have a bilateral industrial r&d program so similarly like with israel we are having we have with canada italy korea spain sweden and it has been supported by our sponsorship uh, ministries like department of science and technology ministry of electronics ministry of commerce we have a academic scientist exchange program with taiwan 
we have uh, also uh, we have participated participated and also implemented various national programs with drdo with the department of heavy industries and with msmes next slide please so these are our global strategic partners so uh, definitely very important partner is uh, there with us today israel innovation authority we have a partner canada with canada nrc canada business finland is our partner from korea we have ketet kiart and national research foundation sweden is there with vinova uk we have innovate uk spain we have cdti spain so these are our global strategic partners next slide please so this is where actually geeta fund and also this program for so we start from the technology readiness level 3 basically i should say where is the proof of concept or there is already uh, the concept is known to the market so we start from the trl level 3 and support up to the trl level 7 or 8 just to support a product development stage or the pilot trial or a, a product adaptation adaptation stage so we do not support a commercialization very much so it is the support is available up to the product development stage next slide please so this is the journey for uh, so far we had been started in 2011 and we took some time uh, to stabilize 2 3 years and now uh, success stories of geeta started coming we have awarded 82 projects till now 25 success story has uh, has been closed we have launched 33 projects with different countries we have eight country partners we have supported different projects almost in 18 states till now and uh, there there is a 19 focus area where we are supporting with this fund till now we have committed a fund uh, approximately up to uh, 3000 million of fund and also investment which we have uh, in attracted from the industry it is almost two times of what we have committed next slide please so thank you uh, that's all from my side uh, thank you sara over to you Thank you, uh, thank you, Hilly. Much. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very, very so much for, to, yeah. thank <laughs> for sharing all of Gita's fantastic work. Those numbers are staggering. We're so happy to see all these success stories come out of the partnerships, and we're looking forward to see those numbers on our RE4F fund as well. Um, so thank you again. Um, so. Um, As mentioned earlier, my name is Hilly. I'm from the Israel Innovation Authority, um, and we'd like to give you a little bit of an overview as we have guests both from Israel and and from India. Um, so we'd like to tell you a little bit about the Israel Innovation Authority. And again, I'd like to remind all of you that all the representatives speaking today are here to assist you. So whether you're Indian or Israeli, please feel free to approach the embassy, Gita, or us. and we'll always be able to route you to the right person um, in accordance with your question. Um, so um, the Israel Innovation Authority has existed for over 40 years. We are the independent uh, entity uh, affiliated to the government that's in charge of supporting, funding, igniting R&D and innovation in Israel and looking outward. Um, we do this understanding that innovation is what strengthens our ecosystem and enables not only the growth of disruptive technologies, but enabling their growth in order to enhance our economic development and inclusive growth. Um, we used to be, maybe some of you know us as the Office of the Chief Scientist. Um, and in the past uh, two years, we've changed our name. Um, and We have a website which we'll are happy to invite you to visit because we work in all stages of companies. We work um, with startups. Um, we do tech transfer from universities. We work with growth companies, what you may know as uh, SMEs. Um, we work with uh, huge companies, everybody who, all the companies that are looking to engage in high stake, high risk R&D and development of innovation, we're there to support them. We understand that innovation requires companies, small and big, to take a risk. And we are there to mitigate that risk in order to make sure 
that we are always um, creating new cutting edge and novelty innovation. Um, understanding that there are different needs for different companies as to their sectors and sizes. We have various programs, funding mechanisms in order to enable the tailored innovation that what, of what the companies require. The Innovation Authority has six divisions um, that are all knowledgeable about the needs of the companies um, according to, as mentioned, their stage and sectors. Um, and we enable the Israeli technology and industry um, to find its path in Israel, but for us, the international division, its path in the global arena. And that's where we partner with fantastic partners like Gita, for example, in order to enable the stepping stone into new markets and to the creation of new partnerships. Uh, for the Israeli companies listening to us right now, if you feel that you're in an earlier stage than going global, we invite you also to look at our other divisions and other funding mechanisms that could help you build up to the stage where you would be compatible for an international partnership. So even if you're early on, don't hesitate to approach one of our other programs. Um, we at the international division work with the whole world. Literally, you can see all the countries we have partnership with um, and we have different varieties of partnerships. So it could be bilateral agreements where we would have um, private sector companies working together, but we also have um, partnerships that allow not only R&D, but also piloting, adaptation, um, some of the partnerships we have aren't as elaborate as the I4F fund, um, which is why this I4F fund is so unique. It's very, very flexible. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. So if any of you listeners here, uh, similar to uh, Mr. Rahul mentioned, are looking for partnerships also beyond India, we're also here for you. Um, when we look at the innovation authority in numbers, we provide about $500 million in funding to private sector companies for the creation of R&D and innovation. So I, I just wanna repeat that for, for some of you, just to make sure you understand, we are a, a essentially an enabler to take uh, public funding and provide it to private sector companies, knowing that they will be able to develop and bring back to the economy and help create inclusive growth which means that we do not provide funding, and this is important for you listeners, to NGOs, for example, under the international division. But if you are a private sector company looking for funding, then we are here for you. Let's dive deep dive into our I4F fund. So for those of you who um, are wondering where this I4F fund has come from, well, we've started um, launching our calls since 2018. So Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Netanyahu have um, had got together in January of 2018 and launched this fantastic $40 million fund to create collaborations between India and Israel um, and the devotion of looking for new tech solutions that could benefit the countries and the world. Um, the um, fund so far has um, created uh, 11 approved projects. For those of you who are saying, well, are we really providing funding? Yes, we are. So 11 approved projects in two years. It's a phenomenal number. This means that we have 22 companies that have already benefited from this fund. Um, approximately 16 million US dollars um, over five calls for proposals. Um, if you have a good partnership and a good project, we are here to enable um, this partnership to grow into a commercializable product. Um, the two entities currently managing the fund are uh, Gita and the Israel Innovation Authority. And the way the fund works is that um, we are looking for projects that are able to commercialize within two years of their launching. This is very important because as uh, Rahul mentioned earlier, if you are TRL one or two, 
the fund is too, it is, it is too late stage for you. We're looking for TRL three onward. So if you have an initial proof of concept, if you're already at the, that stage and you see yourself a, being able to commercialize the product within 24 months, the fund is for you. If you're in an earlier stage, then we're happy to advise you on where you have to get to in order to apply for the fund, but you will not be eligible for the funding itself. The fund provides between 250,000 to 1.25 million US dollars per project for each side, um, it, uh, which means that if right now you have a project that costs $10 million, you can still apply for the fund, but that is not money that we can provide. The fund does have a cap and you can only receive funding up to the cap of the fund. Um, so when you think about applying to the fund, you have to be very cautious on the amount of funding you request. The fund is not a, uh, a full grant based. It's what we call a conditional grant and it requires the company's matching. I'll be very precise on what that means. It means that the fund will not give you 100% of the cost of the project. It will give you up to a limit of 50% of the cost. Um, up to 50% of the cost. This means that if the Indian and Israeli partnership requires a million dollars to create the project, IIA and Gita can provide up to 50% of that million dollars, which means we can support you with $500,000. The reason I emphasize the partnership is because Gita and IIA and the fund itself views the project as a whole. This means that we don't provide money to an Israeli company and provide money to an Indian company. There are two sides to the partnership, but the fund looks at the project holistically, which means that when you apply an Indian and an Israeli to the fund, you apply as one unit, you apply as a partnership. It means you have sat beforehand you have thought out the project cost, the project timeline, and only then submitted a unified format of an application that allows us to understand how you are going to move as one entity forward with this project and what is the cost that you are going to bear. When you submit the cost of the project, you will submit for each side its cost. But when we deliberate on financing this project, we look at it as a whole. And that's very important for us to emphasize. Um, th that is also relevant for um, the timeline of the project. Since it's one project, it can't be that the Israeli side will take six months while the Indian side takes a year. The product as a whole is two years, and that's what we look at. You can also have a project that's six months, 11 months, 13 months, whatever you decide, but the maximum is two years. When you look at the kind of projects the fund supports, we're looking at two sorts, either a, har, a core R&D project focused on the development of new products and technologies. There we will look for a strong component of novelty or an adaptation product project, meaning that the product is more uh, um, developed. We're looking at later stages of TRL but now we're looking to adapt the project to a new market, for example, India. And then we'll look at the customization to a specific market. Um, there are several uh, components of eligibility that you need to look at. And we advise that you go on the GITA and the IIA websites because there's a full uh, document explaining exactly the guidelines, the eligibility, the criteria. You can take your time looking at it, also review this presentation again, and also ask us any questions you have. But um, you have to notice that for the Indian side, um, you have to have 51 ownership by Indian citizens of a company in order to be able, eligible to submit. For the Israeli side, 
you have to be an Israeli registered company that most of its R&D is done in Israel. Um, also, if some of our listeners come from universities, we're happy to have universities as knowledge partners, but you cannot be uh, the main submitters of the application. So you can be in a partnership, but you can't be the project lead. The fund supports uh, five, all, all sectors. So I'll start by saying we're open to any sector that would like to submit. But the fund does give priority to five sectors, um, healthcare, water, energy, ICT, and agriculture. Um, we see in many times that that is where the complementary Indian and Israeli strength lie. However, if you're from materials, industry 4.0, anybody who's listening to us, please apply. It doesn't mean you will not receive funding. We have many projects that have received funding. A lot of the projects that you will see have some elements of ICT, even if it's not that their core. Don't hesitate to apply if you think, even if you think you're not in a priority sector. Um, let's go a little bit about the evaluation criteria. Um, so first and foremost, we're looking at the technological novelty of the project. Many times we receive questions such as, but this is exactly what the Israeli or Indian market needs. And that may be, but if it's something, even if the market requires it, if it doesn't have the element of novelty that we're looking for, then uh, it could be novelty functionality. It could be novelty in the business model. It could be novelty in the, in the tech itself, in the product. There has to be something new about this project that will allow us to say, this is why the fund is going to provide this money. Remember, we are here to enable you to take a risk on innovation. So we will be looking for that new cutting edge breakthrough risk taking uh, step that you're doing in order for us to support it. Um, so take that into consideration. The second thing that we look at is the synergy. This is very, very important. When we look at the synergy, we look at the complementary aspects of the company. Remember, you're applying as a team, both Israeli and Indian companies. So we would like to see that together you have the ability to achieve the project that you're putting on the table. So if one uh, partner has a very, very, very strong R and D capabilities, then the other side should have complementary R&D and maybe also commercialization skills, knowledge about the market, knowledge about the global market. Um, at the same time, it's very important to understand that the fund is looking for, um, let's say, equ equal inputs into the project. And this is very important for the companies listening. When you create a partnership, Gita and IIA would like to see both con companies contribute almost equally to the project. This means that it cannot be a partnership if one company has all the R&D knowledge, all the IP, and the other company only manufactures and commercializes. Those are partnership that are very difficult for the fund to approve. We would like to see um, uh, a synergy that allows a true partnership, knowledge being brought from both sides, maybe IP brought from both sides, new IP created and shared, um, partnerships that aren't based on one side having all the knowledge and the other side only commercializing, be it globally or just in India or in Israel. Um, regarding the market potential, it's very important for us to understand that the product can be commercialized. So taking a risk on R&D is fantastic, but it's your responsibility to convince the fund that this is a product that will succeed and flourish in the market and create an income. You're not limited to having India and Israel in markets. We have partnerships which allow um, commercialization in third markets, in fourth markets, um, you can look at the uh, sphere globally and say, this may not be the market in Israel, but we think that other than India, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, the Philippines would be a, a good call for us also. So you need to show us how the market looks not only towards India and Israel, but also globally. How is this going to succeed forward? Um, and this is a, a remark for uh, both sides. Um, we know that many times uh, Israelis know uh, a lot of the US and European markets and Indians know a lot of the India and Asian markets. Even though um, one side knows it best, we want to see both partners knowledgeable about it. Don't come to the application saying, oh, we're in charge of this part. Our partner will do all the rest on the information on commercialization and market. No. Even if you have a market that's, even you have a partner that's knowledgeable about a certain market, you as their partner will also need to know about that market and put it in your application. So remember that you're one unit and both units needs to be knowledgeable about the market potential. Uh, deliverables. Obviously, we want to know that you have the capabilities in-house in order to deliver the project. Uh, for those of you who are uh, you know, very uh, uh, core R&D units that maybe don't deal with uh, the market potential, think about partnering with even a third partner. So you could have uh, more than two partners working on a project, maybe create a triangle, maybe create an additional outsourcing or a subcontracting partnership to make sure that you come to the table with all the skill sets that are required for us to approve this project. Regarding the budget, make sure um, that um, your budget is well thought out, that you're not um, budgeting things over or under. If you have any thoughts on how, if you want to advise on how to build your budget, we're also here to help you. Um, and of course, show us the benefits of the project to the Israeli and Indian economies. Put effort into the application. Um, it's very important for us. Don't assume that whatever we need to know, we'll find out speaking with you, put the information in the application itself. An example of how we budget a project. So if for example, um, let's say uh, we have here the Israeli company and the Indian company. Um, and the Israeli company has budgeted their side of the project with 1.3 million, the Indian one with 1.2 million, a total cost project of two and a half. The, we, after you submit your applications, will take the project through an evaluation process assessed by technological and financial experts, both on the Indian and on the Israeli side. When the experts assess the project, they may say, listen, we know you have budgeted it by 1.3 or 1.2 million, but we think the project will cost a million or a little bit less. They can also say, we think you've underestimated it. You may need more money. So don't assume that the money that you're asking for is exactly what you will be receiving from the fund. Our experts also have an input on what the cost of the project could be. Once we know what the cost of the project assessment is, the companies qualify for up to 50% support. This doesn't mean you will receive the whole 50%. It could be that you'll receive, that, that you'll qualify for 450 and actually get the 450 as the Indian side received. But it could be that you applied for, that you're qualified for 550, but the board decided to support you 40%. And therefore you will get less than the full 50% you're qualified for. Please note, you have to put the matching funding on the table when receiving money from the fund. This goes back to the sentence I said about, we don't give 100% of the cost of the project. If we supported 50%, you match 50%. If we've supported 40%, that means you match 60%. Um, but there's always a matching component. And part of our due diligence is making sure that a company applying has the ability to match what it is asking for. This means that if you've gone through a financial evaluation and asked for a million dollars, but you don't have the um, million to match, or you're qualifying, you're qualified for a hundred thousand, don't have the hundred thousand to match, then we will not be able to approve your project. I hope that is clear. Barak, Rahul, I can see you. Can you nod if what I said was clear? 
Barack? Yeah, great, fantastic. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so um, right now we're in the midst of CFP6. It's opened until the 7th of December. It's important because we will not be postponing it and we will not be able to receive late applications. Lucky for you, if for some reason you're late, there is a following call for proposals launching in January right after December, which will close um, in the mid of 2021. But for those who are ready and can find a partner and have an idea for a project, use this call for proposals. It's open until the 7th of December. Use us, use the team here online. If you're missing a partner, if you want to have a joint call with your partner to think about your project, to fine tune it, we're here. Um, we're happy to go over the guidelines with you to make sure you're eligible. Um, it's very, very important that for those of you who are, uh, for those of you who are applying, look on the GITA and IIA website and see what are the attached documents you have to put in with your application. For the Israelis, I'm emphasizing, if you will submit an application online without all the documents required, you will automatically be dis disqualified and therefore so will your Indian partner. So you have to make sure that you have all the documents in place. If you're not sure if you have them, give us a call. Apply early and then we'll check it for you. But just make sure you have all the documentation you require when you apply. Um, you can see the timeline here. The fund works quickly. This means that once the call closes in December, it only takes three months until you get replies if you have been approved for funding or not. This is so important for all you SMEs that don't, you know, you need the money now, you need the money short right now to, to come in. You can't wait a year. That's why this fund has come to existence. You will not be waiting a year for your money. You will be approved within three and a half months from the closing of the call. Um, and the fund has a 35% advanced payment once you start the project. Um, so right on the approvement of the project and once you submit the agreement between you and your partner to GITA and IIA and this agreement is approved, you are eligible for 35% advance money on the project in order to start running. The project is monitored on a quarterly basis with midterm evaluations um, in order to make sure that everything is, um, is working properly. And again, we are here as governments to enable and help. This means that you're running on your own. We are not interfering. We are just here to handhold if necessary. If you are online right now and you have a fantastic R&D or adaptation project and you need a partner, this is the India-Israel Industrial R&D Technological Innovation Partner Search Form, which you can send to us. Gita also has an online option where you can log in, put in your details and request a partner. Um, so we can assist you in finding a partner in the month to come so you can submit with them for December. Um, that was the, the details about the fund. I do want to add um, two things. Firstly, I'm assuming that for all our audience here, you already understand why it's so worthwhile partnering with both India and Israel. Uh, needless to say that India is the fastest growing emerging economy post COVID-19. There's nowhere else you want to be. Um, and that they have the highest application of digital services. And Google just invested in them, you know, $10 billion, because even they understand what is the potential in India. And Israel is the, one of the most innovative countries in the world with the highest density of startups and the highest VC investment per capita. Um, we both have skilled economies. This is where you want to be. So utilize the fund in order for us to be able to mitigate the risk for you and allow you to work together. 
We're asking you to use us, utilize our knowledge, utilize our funding to create something strong and effective and good and technological. Um, so I will finish with that. You have our contact information for um, any questions that you have on the fund. Um, and let's live up to our potential, shall we? So we're gonna move now to, um, one moment. We're gonna move now to our, our guest speakers. Um, so we're gonna begin with uh, Dr. Raju Kalindindi, CEO and Medical Director at Apollo Radiology International and the Yal Gua, co-founder and chairman at Zebra Medical. They're one of the companies that the fund supported and we are extremely um, humbled to be able to support the work that they're doing um, in India and its effect globally. Thanks, thank you, Hilly, and uh, thanks to Yal. Can I go first and then I'll let you show the slides up for me? Okay. Okay, thanks very much. So, thanks to uh, Israeli Innovation Authority and Peter for this opportunity to present or uh, talk about the project that we are doing together. Uh, and the funding that's been given to us has been enormously helpful to, to get started and move fast. Uh, I uh, am a doctor, I'm a radiologist. I work with uh, Apollo Hospitals and a, uh, one of its companies called HealthNet Global. Uh, the project that we will be talking about today is an example of adoption of Israeli innovation to Indian healthcare markets. So uh, essentially, as you all know, India is a huge country with massive challenges in terms of being able to provide healthcare, especially in the rural areas. And this applies particularly to a field called radiology, which is to do with scanning patients and being able to give results on the scan quickly enough to be able to help patients. So uh, this is an area where uh, India struggles because there is not enough uh, radiologists to be able to provide services to the massive 1.4 billion population. Uh, so we had to look for disruptive technologies and one of such uh, disruptive technologies is artificial intelligence. So we were looking uh, for the last few years uh, about trying to find the right partner to be able to use uh, that technology in India to try and change uh, to some extent, the public health problem of being able to provide radiology services across the country. So that's when uh, you know, we uh, came into contact with uh, Zebra Medical. Uh, uh, Eyal Gura would uh, show in a more pictorial way of how we met. Uh, but uh, in the last few years have been quite exciting. And uh, I think COVID is an example, uh, example of a public health crisis that could stretch healthcare systems across the world to their utmost limit. And India is uh, not an exception to that. But through this partnership, we were quickly able to bring in Israeli innovation into India in the form of an artificial intelligence algorithm that can diagnose uh, coronavirus infection. Uh, we put, uh, the, put it immediately into service of people in India, and we are actually uh, doing quite well uh, on that area. So essentially the project involves a set of tools that Zebra Medical has developed uh, over the last several years and try to Indianize them because uh, as all of you know, the populations across the world, the demographics are different, the, the type of diseases are different. So one tool doesn't apply to all countries. So what we are doing as part of this project is bringing those tools and run them on a lot of Indian patient uh, data and try and identify areas where it would need modification uh, and modify those tools accordingly so that they are ready for uh, application and commercialization in India. So uh, that's my introduction. I would let Yal do the rest of the talking and then maybe I'll come back at the end of the day. Yal, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Rojo. Let me share the screen. You see the presentation? Yeah? Okay. So um, thank you very much, everyone, for hosting us today. Uh, we're very excited uh, to be part of this and also with the partnership with Apollo. I'll share 
some uh, bites of information about Zebra and our journey so far and how we ended up uh, working with uh, the largest healthcare network in India, which is Apollo Hospital. And um, so Zebra vision is uh, to transform patient care and our mission was always to teach computers how to read and diagnose medical imaging scans uh, at scale. And as you heard from Dr. Raju, uh, in certain places of the world, it's much needed. Uh, the gap between supply and demand uh, for any type of clinician, especially radiologists, is enormous and keeps growing. And so we were lucky early on when we founded the company to get access to the national uh, repository of data in Israel, the Klalit HMO group uh, here in Israel. And we got almost 20 years of longitudinal data. And then we got another 10 years of patient history and imaging scans from Intermountain Healthcare. And, and then we partnered with Apollo Hospital for data collaboration as well. And so we are leveraging those strategic assets of a great team and a lot of data and very strategic investors, uh, including with a unique FDA pre-certification uh, pilot uh, program in order to take those uh, products to market. I'll share with you a use case about one product uh, in a minute. And those are the type of the investors we have, people like Professor Fei-Fei Li, who invented the ImageNet with her team, and Amnon Shashua from Mobileye, and you all know Vinod Koslad um, uh, from Silicon Valley. And um, we've integrated to many different uh, PAC system and hospital and radiology system, and we know how to work with all those type of uh, technologies. And we created several models already that know how to detect specific findings uh, in different imaging scans. We are the only company that have FDA clearance for three different imaging modality. Mammogram is one of them, uh, chest x-ray is one of them, and head CT is another one. And we are soon going to deploy more tools in the, the chest CT uh, paradigm. And the solution is analyzing uh, scans as they go uh, into the hospital. Um, it's a cloud-based solution, fully automated. The analysis is done on the cloud uh, without any risk to patient uh, data uh, because everything is de-identified while still in the hospital. And then we push the solution uh, to the hospital and uh, to various system. And we have uh, many deployments in very interesting parts of the world. We have a new one actually now in Nepal and Mongolia as well. And so the solutions serve as a second opinion to many radiologists, sometimes as a safety net to junior radiologists during a night shift. And it's very speedy, as you will soon see. We met Apollo uh, five years ago. Um, I had a chance to meet Miss Sangeeta Reddy and fascinated by her dad's and her family vision about uh, transforming uh, healthcare in India. And then two years ago, we were able to uh, start the collaboration and to transform India healthcare. And uh, last year, uh, we got the grant um, uh, from uh, uh, Gita and the Israel Innovation Authority with the focus to fight tuberculosis in India and to develop tools, uh, AI tools using the data we have and Apollo have in order to benefit patients in India. Um, and, and nowadays, the solutions are already deployed uh, in uh, almost, I think, 40 hospitals out of the Apollo cluster, and, and it's already creating impact. And as Dr. Raju mentioned, we were able this year to, to give a pretty fast uh, solution for COVID-19, which obviously was an unexpected uh, uh, development for this year, but we're very proud to be able to do it with the team. Um, and so far, uh, around 100 thousand patients scans were already touched by the technology and uh, this number keeps growing so we're very proud of this uh, impact i'll give you just one example of how a solution look like uh, this is an illustrative image of course it's not a real patient um, but uh, the, the stories are real and um, for example you can have an old lady that comes to the emergency room with a head trauma someone um, check and do a neuro, neurological examination. Um, the CT scan doesn't uh, show any type of bleeding. So the decision is to release the patient home, but the um, emergency department or the work list of the radiologist suddenly gets an alert from the brain bleed AI detector of uh, Zebra. Um, and then this patient could be better treated. And in other cases, it can be just promoted on top of the top list, of, uh, to the top of the work list. 
and get uh, treated faster. So this is just one use case. We do the same thing with uh, other acute cases like pneumothoraxes. We can also prioritize all the ladies that had uh, suspected breast cancer but couldn't come to the hospital for six months because of COVID. So now we can prioritize them to the top of the list. So those are just some examples of uh, what we do. And so the service obviously is uh, very good for the patient. It increases safety and, uh, and, and also uh, predict risk. And also for radiologists, um, we can uh, identify normal cases versus abnormal and alert for acute cases. Uh, in India, as Dr. Raju mentioned, uh, COVID-19 is, uh, is a big thing. You, you want maybe to join Dr. Raju and uh, talk about COVID-19? Because of the speed with which COVID-19 is spreading uh, in India and all over the world, uh, clearly the, the manpower, the healthcare manpower is really struggling to meet the needs and, and technology uh, is required to, to help us out. And AI is potentially the most powerful tool that, that can be used to help us out. So as you can see here, this is a CT scan uh, on a patient who has COVID-19 and ground glass opacities are the ones that are typical for this disease. So the AI algorithm has already identified where the problem is, uh, the, the yellow line around uh, is showing where the problem is, and it is also estimating that 70% of the lungs in this patient are involved. So not only is it confirming the diagnosis, it is also telling the doctors how much of the lung is involved. And all this is done in a matter of seconds. It's not that radiologists can't do it, they can, but they just don't have enough time in this day and age and in this kind of demand to be able to manually do that. And that's where technology helps. And we are able to put this in place within a matter of weeks or, or maybe a month or two uh, since COVID-19 became a, a, a significant problem. Over to you, Jan. And, uh, and uh, thank you, Dr. Ajun. Another big part, which is the original part of uh of this uh, grant that we got it was to create um, to create a, a model that can uh, help uh, detect uh, TB in uh, rural India. Um, TB is uh, obviously a worldwide epidemic. Uh, we have uh, 3.6 million people that have TB and missed by healthcare systems worldwide every year. And obviously, it's very infectious. And so um, together with Apollo and the data that is already uh, created and curated by uh, Dr. Raju Group, and um, we're going to uh, fine tune the AI models that Zebra already have for chest x-rays and uh, different type of opacities and to fit them. Uh, as Dr. Raju said, you need to fit the AI to the local market. So we're going to fit them to uh, create such a model. And then this model will be served over the cloud by and the Apollo's entity to uh, uh, rural India, uh, where you have small clinics and even sometimes truck the trucks that come with uh, portable chest x-rays to do uh, ongoing uh, screening of uh, TB. And this is done because we can't obviously cope with the gap between uh, the supply and demand of doctors, and we can't add 2 million doctors in order to fight TB uh, by 2030. Um, this is pretty much it. Um, we, th we thank so much for the Israeli Innovation Authority and for Gita for supporting us. Uh, this support enables us uh, not only to initiate the product, but it also provide a framework and uh, an engagement mechanism between the entities. So uh, it's great for both parties. And we are very proud to take a technology that was developed in a, such, such a tiny place like Israel to uh, a market that is going to be the second largest healthcare market in the world, which is India. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Um, and we hope to be there on the sidelines when you uh, start taking over the whole world um, and change uh, the way we look at healthcare and medicine um, with your, uh, you know, successful tools um, and see how it also can impact COVID-19. So thank you very much for the amazing work that you're doing. Um, so 
I'd like now to invite uh, Mr. Rafi Broom, uh, CEO of AgroSolar, and Mr. Avinash KR, CEO of Ayodhya, to speak about their successful uh, partnership and case study. See your mic is mute. But if you are on mute. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> uh, I hope you're still awake. It's late in the afternoon in India. And uh, again, can you can you see my screen? Yes, Sophie, you can. Okay, fine. So uh, here's another story uh, between our two companies, Israeli company and Indian company, AgroSolar and Vioda in India. And this is our project. Uh, as you might recall, we are in the water business, energy, and agriculture. Somehow my screen doesn't function. Okay. Um, AgroSolar is a startup company, actually. Uh, was registered in 2014. And after uh, for the last four or five years, we are dealing with pumping water with solar energy. And uh, as you can see here, uh, countries in South America, Africa, and South Asia who have no access to energy for rural areas suffer from... Uh, a lack of water to be used for agriculture. And hence, uh, and, and of course it uh, relates to food. I, I'll, I go fast because I want to leave enough, enough time to talk about the collaboration. But we saw India as, as our focus, since if you look at this uh, slide, um, only one third of the Indian, of the Indian farmers are really cultivating their lands during the dry season. And about more than 65 land is not irrigated. And the reason is energy, because in these farms, most of them are off grid. Uh, they have no secured energy, so they do not pump water during the dry season, hence no agriculture in the dry season. Uh, my partner and myself, we thought about how to help these farms both all over the world, I mean globally, Africa, South America, Asia. And what are we talking about? It's solar panels, pumping water for agriculture. In few words, this is the, this is the system. We have the sun. Sun hits the panels, which then turns it into, ener into energy, okay, which has been transferred to a controller and then electrical pump is, used here to pump water, push the, the water out and irrigate. The, the, the season that we saw in India, and we traveled all over India in, in 2010 and 12 and 14, were very limited to, the, to access to this system because they were very, very expensive. And the reason is that all these components, panels, controls co and, and pump uh, were actually not developed to, to this particular use and hence not efficient and were expensive. So we thought to, to develop something very different, something that will use, be, use the sun in more efficient way. Most pumps, and I would say majority of them, are centrifugal pumps, which means when this, the sun is out and you can see this insolence here. This is seven o'clock in the morning, this is the afternoon, and this is how much, how much energy is being irradiated in solence over one square meter versus the time. So in most cases, we saw pumps using uh, and pumping water only four and a half hours during a day. So we thought about developing a new product, a new pump that will use the energy in most of the day, early morning and late in the afternoon. And in, 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 in essence, this is what we are doing. These are the centrifugal pumps. I'm not going to technology, but in, 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 in few words, these pumps need to rotate very, very fast. 
So in early morning, you still ha you have the energy. The sun is coming out. This is, these pumps are rotated, but they are not pushing water out. Whereas positive displacement pumps, like this reciprocating piston pump, whenever the sun is out in the early morning and late in the afternoon, this pump can still push water out of the deep well. So in essence, the efficiency of these kind of pumps are about 40%, and we were aiming to reach up about 65%. And in, uh, the reason is that if you, use, if you need less energy, you need, you need less panels. And in essence, the cost per, per uh, water pump could be the lowest possible. Uh, after three and a half years of development, we achieved our goal. We had a very interesting pump, this one here, with an efficiency about more than 60, 65%. Uh, and with low with low threshold start thresholds, and uh, again low sensitivity to the depth, which is also very much important. Okay, it was very efficient, but still too expensive to the market. Luckily enough, we were being informed about this I4F fund, and in January uh, 2018, we approached this fund. And we were lucky to do it, to, to have our partner. This was the easiest part of it, to find a partner in India, because our main investor is an Indian company, a group called NR Group. This is a group here. And they found us a partner in India, the Vyoda company. And we teamed up to approach uh, the, first C the, the, the first CFP uh, for this bilateral fund. So in January, 2000, uh, in uh, April 2018, we, we completed our uh, pro proposal and we're together, me and Avinash here, we, he will tell us more about the, the Indian side of it. And we prepared our, our application. And the aim was as follows. We need to develop uh, a new approach to our engineering, change something in engineering to make it more manufacturability and adopt it to the Indian market. This was the ticket, adopting an, an innovative technology to the Indian market needs. So, and, and we wanted to reduce the cost, the, the bomb, the, the bill of material cost by 70%, uh, develop a new controller, which will be suitable to the Indian market because we had no idea how a farmer, how Indian farmer would use our product, how to approach a farmer in India and what are the needs. Uh, how to manufacture it in the low cost, not by mass production, but to, uh, to use the right equipment for mass production, manufacturing facilities, how to test what kind of equipment we need, and how to test it in the field. We had no clue, no idea how to do it in, in, in the field. And as I said, we were lucky enough to this partner to, to lead us and change things in the, in, in the engineering side to make it sure to make it added to the Indian market and comply with the Indian regulations. The MNRE, Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, uh, Ministry uh, in, the, in, in the Energy, in energy Ministry in India. So I'll hand it over to Avinash uh, to tell us a little bit about the Gita and the Indian part of, side of it. Uh, thanks, Rafi. Uh, hi, my name is Avinash. I represent the Yoda Indian partner here. So this is the final uh, product. Whatever Rafi showed is more, more of a pictorial. This is what our uh, final 3D model uh, look like. So if you look uh, the pump from right to left, we have an inbuilt uh, driver controller in the pump, and we have a BLAC motor, which is uh, then uh, con connected to a ball screw through a coupling in between. So this uh, ball screw is the one which converts the linear uh, rotary motion into linear motion. And then the ball screw is connected to a connecting rod to a piston. So this is something, something like a uh, typical an engine and uh, car engine where the piston goes up and down and pushes the fuel in the, or compresses the fuel in the car. Here, the thing is when the piston, the, the great part here is when the piston is moving up, the water is pumped out. And when the piston is moving down, the water is pumped out. Positive displacement technology is not new. In fact, it is much older than a centrifugal pump. The difference, what we got it here, is the pumping of water in both the direction when moving up and down and making it more efficient. 
So if you look at it, these are the results what uh, we have got. We have got almost 70%. Uh, next, next letter, please. Hmm, we are going back. Next one. So, no, no, Rafi, we just uh, skipped it. One more thread back, Rafi. You, I think you moved fast. No, no, Rafi, you are moving much faster now. Okay. So are, go back, back, back. You are moving faster. Go back. Yeah, stop here. Stop. No, no, no. So next slide, Rafi. Go to the next slide. For 15. Slide number 15. One five. Yeah. So this is what uh, we got the efficiency, which is uh, more than 70%, which is compared to the existing technology of a centrifugal pump. See, the more, uh, the, the advantageous part of this uh, pump is, uh, one is efficiency, we talked about it, but the pressure. In fact, our pump is more of a pressure pump compared to a centrifugal pump, which is more of a flow pump. What does it mean is, in, in middle of the what the flow is there, it keeps a constant pressure throughout the day. By this, we can have more micro irrigation. And we all know that we have, we have more micro irrigation, you use less water and you don't spoil, deplete the water table. This is one important uh, thing. And second thing is it's worse for longer. So what Rafi showed in his uh, slide on our slide, it almost starts and we are testing it uh, in a real field. It almost starts seven o'clock in the morning and goes up to 5, 5.30 in the evening in the summertime. So that means it works like longer hours. It's like uh, the farmer also can go to office hours. I mean, he can go at eight o'clock, turn on the machine and he can come back at five o'clock. And since it gives constant pressure, it also gives the uh, constant flow and he can plan his irrigation. Third one is, uh, in fact, in a cloudy area, cloudy time also, we are seeing where the irradiance is around 3.4 to 4. The still our pump works, where it is impossible for a centrifugal pump to uh, work. Rafi, you are moving fast. You are just go back to one more slide. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, here, the last one is lot, last but not the least. Without any additional flow meter, we can exactly give the amount of water which is uh, pumped out of the water. This helps the farmer to irrigate and he can plan his uh, thing. Assuming he has a five acre land, he can plan that in the morning I do first half and second half, I can do it because he knows what is the amount of water which has been uh, flown here. So this advantage is here. Rafi, next one. So this is what uh, we have got the results in lab in both uh, the uh, UL lab as well as the MNRE lab in Italy. And uh, if you look at the uh, L per there is liter per watt peak, we are almost, uh, if you look at it, uh, more than 58, 70, 80 percent efficient than centrifugal pump. Just to take an example here, if you look at the first one, 70 meter 5 HP pump, the current centrifugal pump, they are using almost 4.8 kilowatt or 400 watt uh, panels and giving 70 liter water. And we use 3,300 watt and gives almost same amount of uh, water. This is where we are talking about the efficiency. The deeper we go, we are more efficient. So if you look at 100 meter, still we pump at almost 51,000 liters of water at 3.3 uh, kilowatt of uh, panel. And these results have been, uh, we got from the lab, two labs, and we have also got a formal certificate from uh, these labs. Next slide, Rafi. Yeah, this is what uh, we just talked about. I talked about the advantages of the pump and the efficiency, we talked about it. I don't want to be next one, Rafi, you can just go to this one. Yeah, this is, I would say, uh, our experience uh, working from the Gita side, as Rafi said, uh, we got uh, the proposal in uh, Jan 2018. And uh, this is how you can uh, see the milestone we submitted in uh, April. And uh, uh, in India, we got a uh, call to make a presentation to the committee. The committee had academicians, the industries, experts, everyone there in the, from the industry were there from the Gita side. And we made a presentation. And Gita had some uh, clarification. We, there are some uh, uh, documentation which you gave. And Gita team, uh, you can see the photograph there, which visited us uh, to see uh, our facility, what we talk, do we have a prototype, all those things. Uh, they came down and they made a due diligence, basically. And then uh, end of uh, July, we got uh, the uh, award. That is, you can see the photograph there where we got the award from there. And in uh, August, uh, we formally uh, got an uh, uh, official document from Gita side saying that we have been given award. And then in November, uh, I am telling you why from August to November, people uh, can think it is getting delayed. And this was the first time where uh, Gita and I4F was uh, doing it. So for Gita, it was the first time and it was the first time. So 
there are some uh, uh, rule of the land they have to follow the documentation and it's a government funding so the agreement was a little bit uh, delayed and i think now they have shortened the time to a large uh, extent and the jan 2019 we signed the agreement and when we signed the agreement immediately as sheli was mentioning our presentation we got 35% amount credited to our uh, account so all in all i would say being uh, geeta being i would say like a sandwich between the government and the private sector here they could still pull out uh, this uh, for the first time uh, in uh, one year of uh, time and i would say we got lot of uh, support and when they came for due diligence they had some intelligent question they asked and which we took it into consideration which we also replied to them and which also incorporated in our project so we had the industry expert supporting us giving us guidance and explaining in fact uh, one of our industry expert he said uh, when he joined as a fresher and he was quite uh, experienced he said it one of his project was to make a piston pump it servicing so he had lot of information he had lot of challenges which he which he faced and we could give him answer to it so that was quite information for us from uh, geeta side next one uh, rapi so i would say uh, once uh, geeta got it in fact i would say the esl we uh, we got a winner on the esl for uh, clean energy and i would also say this was uh, through the geeta support because after we meeting geeta geeta told us esl is uh, also looking for this type of project why don't you go and talk to them when we went met esl they said that there's a competition why don't you uh, attend the challenge and it's just not a challenge now there is a follow up to this and esl has come back and esl is a once again a psu energy efficient service limited they are one of the large installer of the solar pump and in fact they are also working with international solar alliance to come out with a tender for two, uh, 275k pumps in the african market so it's just not a award it's also a market for us from the esl so we would say geeta was the one who connected us to esl we got the certificate the next one rapi and uh, in the next we were a bit short on time so i yeah. apologize i apologize we're a bit short on time yeah we are just uh, sorry sorry hili if, if you could just uh, you know, uh, yeah this is sorry. the last one Oh no! no I, I'd love. <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm happy to. If you'd like to summarize or give us a a, a final statement to the audience before we continue. Uh, sure. See, uh, the I would say summarization is uh, uh, at least uh, from the Indian side. I would say this was the first experience, uh, at least for me, with uh, that uh, and collaboration where uh, government of uh, India through Gita and funding for a project, novel project for the. indian farmers which is going to support the farmers here and uh, i would say quote unquote uh, very very less uh, bureaucratic but few things uh, we cannot escape we need to follow the rule of the land uh, i would say almost zero bureaucracy and lot of uh, support we got uh, from the geeta side uh, rahul and uh, the team were there were very supportive and uh, it was i would say more of a discussion we used to had than of a one side that you do what i say was never we never heard that from the uh, geeta side we said normally typically in government said i do you do what i say it never had it and we were always they were all supportive and asking relevant question not i would say not irritating question i would say relevant question we were there and uh, in fact we could not complete on time because of uh, lot of issues we had some technical problems and geeta and i were uh, quite uh, supportive by extending the project uh, understanding the need and extending the project for this so i would say thank you geeta and i for supporting and the success story i would say what the success story is in fact me and rafi in fact every monday today we had a call every monday to uh, review the project and we worked like a single company we don't work like the dri history company and indian company we work like a single company we so are is, really working like a team very very close that's it i would say so that's no thank you so much thank you very much i'm so happy that this is uh, recorded on youtube because otherwise i don't think anybody would believe that they just said about two governments that it wasn't bureaucratic no. i'm going <laughs> to that's such a lovely <laughs> so great to hear um and and we're happy that sometimes we can uh, succeed in um you know being less involved and with that allowing private sector companies to really work together and succeed um so 
Um, we're coming towards the end of our webinar. We're also running a little bit late. So unfortunately, we will not be able to answer all the questions you wrote um, uh, during the webinar, but we do promise to write back to anybody who's asked a question and we'll also make sure to revert the questions that are specifically to the companies, to Barack, to Rahul, um, in order for them to answer. We already saw questions about the smart mobility initiative for Barack, people who were interested. Uh, there were specific questions about um, other funding opportunities needs under Gita. So we'll be sure to forward all those questions. Um, we will address um, a few things that were raised many times during the questions. So I'll just repeat it. No, there is no option on, um, on uh, forgiving the, the matching component. So if you are a company and you don't have the ability to match, you can bring money from investors, you can bring money from outside, you can, um, in Israel, there are uh, various ways, probably angels in India as well. The money doesn't have to be yours, but you have to show your ability to match the funding that you're receiving from Gita and IIA. If you don't have um, you can always ask for the amount of money that you are able to match in order not to go too high, but the matching component will always exist. Another question that came up a few times was, we do not want the Israeli and Indian companies to create a JV, not at all. You are not supposed to have stakes in each other's companies, no. If you do have a stake and you are a JV, you will not be able to apply for the fund. You can only apply for the fund if you are an Israeli entity and an Indian entity um, and you have come together for this project. So any questions about JV and ownership of companies, it's also in the guidelines. But again, we do not want you to be a JV. We want you to be two separate companies working together. Regarding questions that were asked on the um, um, loan and how the conditional loan works. This is not a research grant. This is not a loan um, like you would get from the bank or maybe other funds that you've known in the past. This is what we call a conditional grant. This means that the repayment of the money is conditioned upon your commercialization success. So if the two companies have come together and received the funding from the fund and the project has been successful, the companies will repay Gita and IIA, each to its own entity, from the income of the product that you have developed from the money that we've provided for you. So for any big companies there that are now going into an R&D project, this doesn't mean that you're paying us from the overall income of the company, but from the income of the product that we helped you develop. This is how it is in IIA and that you pay royalties to IIA from Gita and for, sorry, IIA and Gita, I'll repeat that sentence. You pay royalties to IIA and Gita from the income. How you pay the royalties, this is the Gita will manage with its companies and IIA with manage will with our companies. Rahul, would you like to add anything regarding the conditional grant and the payment of royalties? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Hilly. I think you have explained it uh, very well. So it is just like that you will be getting this money for two years of development period. After that, you will be given a one year of pooling period or the pre-commercialization period. And then you have to start the commercialization. Uh, so in we have given you a total 10 years uh, in which whatever income you will be, net income you will be generating from the product or the services which you are doing for the product, or if you are developing any uh, or doing any technology transfer or for the manufacturing of that product. So for any income which you are generating from the product, you have to pay back uh, royalty in next 10 years. Minimum on Indian side, we generally say 2% of royalty, but it can be decided based on the market of the product. Thank, thank you, you thank you, much. Another question that was raised, defense is not eligible for the fund. Yes, if you have uh, elements of cyber, HLS, civil products, yes. Defense is not part of the fund's mandate. Um, another question that was raised, when you request 
funding from uh, I4F. The gap between what the Indian and the Israeli sides request cannot be bigger than 60, 40 for each side. I'll explain that again. If now the project cost $1 million, then one side can ask for 600,000 and the other side can ask for 400,000. You can also ask for 50-50 exactly. But if the gap is more than 60-40, let's say if one side needs 30% and the other side needs 70, you are no longer eligible to receive the funding. Again, we're looking for an equal partnership, equal input, equal outcome, equal contribution. And so the funding also needs to be more or less the same request from both sides. It doesn't have to be exact, but the cap cannot, the, the gap cannot be more than 60-40. And again, the, the cap of the fund is 1.25 million for each side. That means a total of two and a half million dollars of support. Um, any other questions that came out a lot, Tara? Something that, okay. Um, we will make sure to forward um, the questions again to the various uh, uh, speakers. Uh, Rahul, uh, Barak, anything you would like to add that I may have forgotten or you'd like to emphasize or anything from your end? Um, yeah, Hindi, so just uh, from my eligibility eligibility point of view because somebody has raised the question also i was seeing that 51 percent of eligibility from indian side so we want the 51 percent stake of the company on the indian side should be held by the indian citizen the company headquarters should be registered in india then only they are eligible apart from that we do not support any proprietorship partnership or llp uh, kind of company. So any company which is proprietorship, partnership, or LLP, limited liability partnerships, we are not supporting on from Indian side. And the company should be registered under Company Act. The company should be registered under Company Act. The fund can be given to startups. Uh, there is no limitations uh, for startups uh, focusing. Uh, this fund is for SME startups, even sometimes for the large company. But under this eligibility criteria, the startups can bring some investor, as Hili has already said, the startup can bring letter of comfort, letter of intent from the investor during the evaluation time to show that how the 50% is contributed from their side. So this is uh, specially related to the eligibility criteria on the Indian side. Hili, this is uh, that much uh, from my side. Wonderful. Thank you, Rahul. And also we want to say, use the case studies that we brought forward today as a good example. Um, you, you heard from Rafi and Avinash. They did an adaptation product pro process, but they brought forth a strong component of R&D and development. I know a lot of you are thinking of an adaptation product. Make sure that you do have have an R&D component, make sure that you have a development component, make sure it's a strong project, not just a simple adaptation for a market. That's something that the fund will not look at. So uh, make sure um, that you um, develop a strong uh, project that you can bring forth. Um, Barack, is there anything else you'd like to add? Just to say that uh, you, uh, all of you, uh, but, uh, all of the participants are welcome to reach out to the economic and trade missions of the Israeli Ministry of Economy in Mumbai, Bangalore, and Delhi uh, in order to scout for relevant uh, partners. In some cases, we will uh, address you to the Israeli Innovation Authority, in some cases to other entities in, uh, in Israel uh, or in India, uh, the Chamber, Chamber of Commerce, uh, to Gita. Uh, 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 we know exactly uh, uh, how to reach out to the relevant uh, stakeholders, the relevant partners, or to the relevant uh, uh, um, uh, clients uh, that you're looking for, uh, uh, partners that you're looking for. So it's all up to you. you just reach out to us and we will find a, a, the relevant solution to you. Thank you. Thank you, Barack. So we look forward to seeing all your applications before the deadline of 7th December. It was a privilege to be here today. Thank you to all our speakers, to all our partners, to you, the participants, for finding the time. And we know time is the most valuable thing to be here with us. And we hope to hear from you. Uh, have a wonderful day and evening.